wanna fight, fight, fight for Iowa. Let every lawyer Iowa see. Welcome to Sports Opinion, the weekly sports talk show on Channel 18. I'm Dirk Keller. This is Bob Boyd. Over there on the far side is <coughs> Bud Supel and Earl Murphy. And in between Earl and I, we've got Regina, head football coach Marv Cook. Marv, welcome back. Good to be back. I appreciate you having me on. Well, we love having you on Sports Opinion. We'd like to make this a Wednesday before Thanksgiving tradition where the state title championship coach is in the studio <laughs> with us. <laughs> Not putting any pressure on you or nothing, but uh, yeah. back to back undefeated seasons, state titles. Almost. <laughs> 12, 12 other teams have ever accomplished that. Undefeated seasons with back to back state titles. I can name one Harlan. Yeah, Solon. 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 Thanks, Twice. Sir. Times two. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think somebody said there Des Moines Valley. Uh, Maybe did it. Dowling. Maybe Dowling, I suppose. Might be. Might be Dowling. Maybe Helan. What about St. Albert's? St. Albert's would be one. Yeah. One. And they played before your game. That was a, kind of an exciting game, too. I'm sure you didn't get to watch it, but uh, a lot of exciting games at the state tournament this year. Everything but the eight man football. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't that some mm -hmm. ridiculous? 81 to nothing. Oh, my yeah. gosh. How's that happening? I, I talked to Mark Allen after the <laughs> Regina game. And uh, he was exclaiming how there were so many good, exciting games for him to do, mm -hmm. except the A game. Yeah. And he said that was just torture, and it didn't go fast. Eight man. Or was it eight man? Oh, eight yeah, man. because you got an A division, too. Ah, uh, OK. Yeah. Well, that was brutal. But I got to tell you, that game Marv, was something to behold. Um, first time you've been behind in a game all season and didn't seem to stress any of the kids yeah i mean that's uh you know we practice hard during the week and, and, and simulate game situations and, and simulate being behind and taking safeties and and going through all that procedure mm. and i think uh you know hopefully the process we go in practice is stressing them uh and ultimately just you know we, we emphasize just play the time try to get better every snap and and uh don't get caught up in the ebbs and flows of the game and uh you know fortunately for them they they kept their composure down 10 nothing and and I'm telling you, there was, after the fact, I went back and watched the film, there was three or four times when we punted it to them, we were down 10 nothing. they get the ball in midfield. And if they score again, yep. we could be in a, in a, in a world of hurt. And um, our defense just rallied and, and, and forced two or three, three and outs uh, right before the half that were huge uh, to keep us close. So uh, that was a huge uh, uh, performance by our defense in the first half. Big time. How about uh, that 43-yard field goal? That was awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that back was up field goal kicker, no less. Well, yes. Nick, Nick probably would have been a starter. Uh, he got hurt really the first week of practice this ah. season, mm -hmm. and had a pretty significant injury. What's uh, Nick's last name? Dolezal. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came back in, in in about week six, seven, re-injured it, mm -hmm. uh, and just kept working hard. And and we needed him in the in the championship game, obviously in the semis. He was kicking in the end zone, which is huge in high school. Mm -hmm. it you was have to huge. take it on the twenty. Yeah. Versus a 35 or 40, and and uh, and then he hits that 43 yard field goal, which is a state class 2A championship game record. So. I didn't know that. Is that right? And he's left footed. <laughs> wow. And he's back, so that makes me really happy. So. Yeah, so back. So he's a junior, Mark. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, if for viewers who didn't get to see the game, Spirit Lake was no slouch. That's they, for sure. I got a chance after uh, talk to some Spirit Lake fans, and I personally told them. Not only did your team play great, but I think it was the best team that Regina's had to face all year. Uh, in pregame, we were watching with binoculars, Spirit Lake warm up, and number 25, the cable mm -hmm. kid, the running back. Mm -hmm. The kid was built like a college football player. Yeah. The uh, thing that we noticed on film was that, one, they, they, they played very aggressive. They ran the football extremely well, and they were very athletic. Every person on the field was athletic. And in one and two a football, you know, it's hard to have 11 great players yeah. on the field at all time and and uh, with that kind of depth, but they had it. And uh, their nose tackle, uh, Brox, was really a stud inside, tough kid. Uh, <laughs> so I really admired them. I admired the way they played. I admired uh, the way they went about their business. It was a great game. I mean, both teams were playing mm -hmm. physical, but there was a lot of good sportsmanship. and Sure seemed it. Um, and, and when you have that type of intensity, it's good to see. So, um, uh, But so... Very impressed with them, and, and like you said, I mean they were they were tough kids, and they they deserved to be in the championship game. They were definitely worthy, and, and 
you know, one bounce here or there, and it's it's, it's yep. easy easily the championship trophies up there versus down yeah. in Iowa City. Well, mm -hmm. like you said, they you know they could have easily gone up 17 to nothing in the first half. In the reverse, in the second half, when you scored three touchdowns straight, those of us in in the media buyers thought, oh boy, here we go again. Spirit Lake didn't think that. And they mm -hmm. took the blows and came right back and delivered some of their own. Well, and then they had the, they had a first and goal on the one. Yeah. And it was a 24-17 game. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and uh, they, you know, we stuffed them the first time. And then they had a, a mishandled <laughs> snap that forced them back about a three-yard loss. And then Danny Patient knocked down a third down pass. Mm -hmm. To make it fourth down, they decided to kick the field goal. Now, was, what yard line were they on? That was fourth and what? Six yard line? Yeah. 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 I, Let me I ask you this. What yeah. if you went for that? Yeah. Um, you know, probably not uh, because the way they were playing defensively, if they could have stopped us on a three and out or, or four, five and out and got the ball back with five minutes to go or four minutes to go, you know, they would have been back down there knocking on the door, uh, you know, or they would have felt that they could have been back down there with a good offensive series. Mm -hmm. Uh, for a touchdown in the victory, but uh, uh, fortunately for us, another thing we work on all the time is is a three or four or five minute drive uh, where you need three or four first downs, and that's exactly what we had to do that last drive. And we basically got the ball on our 25 yard line and, and got four or five first downs and ran the clock out. So, and that won you the championship. Sure did. That they had that five minute drive. See, they five had plus minutes. four points, right? Yep. The yeah. field mm -hmm. goal wouldn't have done them any no. good. They no. had a score, right? Yeah. yeah. They had a score touchdown. To be, <clears throat> Your passing was pretty good. 10 of 15, yeah, it was a good performance. Mm -hmm. uh, we mixed in some stuff with our zone running. They were some great packing catches. the box a little bit, yeah. Two great catches. Yeah, yeah. George Seal. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. oh yeah. boy. I, I said on the radio, he's he's the big play guy, and mm -hmm. he got the big play that I thought turned the game around. He caught one that I thought was intercepted. Yeah. 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 I was been. joking that, uh, mm -hmm. well, you know, we always talk about if you're throwing the ball down the field, on the outside, you can't miss short and inside. Mm -hmm. And Nate, Nate was fighting an ankle injury. Uh, he didn't practice all week uh, before the championship. Nate yeah, quarterback. Nate and, and he left it a little short and inside, and, and, and oh. George just made a phenomenal adjustment mm -hmm. on it. And he, and got it. I was going to ask you about Nate because how badly hurt was he? I mean, you just said that he didn't practice. I mean, he had to be pretty I mean, sore. Yeah, it was significant. I mean, it was. Uh, um, you know, a pretty good ankle sprain that kept him out of the, the semis late in the game. He actually mm -hmm. came back in late, but uh, was was obviously hobbled. Uh, but it was bad enough that he, you know he wasn't able to practice. Our backup quarterback was didn't really practice all week, uh, so we were looking at our third string guy. And you know, and who would that be? I've been a young fella. That's uh, what I thought. <laughs> uh, we had a couple guys, Alex O'Brien, and, and then my son Drew Cook would have been. Yeah ready to go and then we'd had a look at our wildcat package which is a couple mm -hmm. backs in the back yeah but, uh, what year is alex o'brien he is a junior he is okay yeah. um well that's pretty gutsy on alex streb the quarterback yes. part uh, there are a lot of questions nick. coming into that game uh what did i say alex streb. i said alex nick streb nick streb sorry nick nate uh nate nate streb. Streb. Yeah. right here too but he's a streb and there's a lot of them <laughs> well i wanted to go back to uh, George Seal's catch, Bob. I wish you could have seen it because, like Mark yeah. said, it was short and inside. And George is a good sized boy and he also has great leaping ability. He went up and over the defender who had position. And we all thought intercepted, yeah. a change, in, you know, turning point in the game for Lake. But he just took that right out of there uh, like a burglar. And it was beautiful. And then, well, he's played well all year. Has well, as the season went on, he got yeah. better and better yeah. and better. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, what is he? He's six three. Yeah, he's 6'3", 190. And okay. uh, you know, I, I told, I said at the uh, re, the reception back at Regina, I said, you know, I'd have been really impressed if he hadn't done it, you know, in the semis, and then he did it twice in the in the quarterfinal yeah. game, and he did it. And, I mean, he's <laughs> the last seven or eight games he's made unbelievable oh, for us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and and defensive plays. Time. Yeah, huge. Yeah, you know, he's a big corner, um, you know, hard to throw at with his size and his mm -hmm. athleticism. So, Well, you've gotten seven of your players on the All-State team. I don't know if that's a record for Regina. I've got them all listed here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zachary was picked first team offensive line. Uh, Nate Strab quarterback was picked as a first team utility. I didn't know they had a... Well, I saw Charles Rogers is that too. So yeah, I, 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 I think uh, is that new this year? 
I, I think when you have a player that's that, that you know, I mean, they both play offense and defense, mm -hmm. and, and they're, they 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 have a phenomenal year, but you don't necessarily know where to put them because uh, uh, from a statistical standpoint, they may not be. Uh, you know, the elite, you know, like the Mediapolis quarterback had unbelievable numbers. Oh, he was good. Um, but from a, you know, from what Nate did for our team and for the, you know, he only played halves probably yeah. because of the schedule and the way it worked out. And his, so his statistics weren't very good. Although 20 interceptions or 20 touchdowns and only one interception in wow. a 14 game season is pretty darn good. So Did that interception in the title game get him down at all? Did it phase him? I, I hope not. It actually, I was actually almost relieved. Yeah. You know, I mean, not not relieved the first no, possession yeah. with the interception, but I mean, it's just one of those things that you you don't want to talk about, and it's just kind of the 800 pound gorilla in the room. You know, I believe it. But everybody does talk about yeah. coaching staff yeah. with the kids, yeah. but two everybody years, else. One reception. Yeah, our starters. Yeah, our starting quarterback last uh, two years in yeah. 28 games has only thrown one interception. Yes, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> pretty that good. is amazing, and and that's a testament to Coach Hinkle and and, and Jack wow. and Nate. And, and their, their, mm -hmm. their ability to manage the offense and, and uh, make good decisions. So we've been very, very blessed with that position. Two years in a row with great quarterbacks. Was Jack Verducci a first-team All-Stater? Yes. He had to be. Yeah. So that's back-to-back -back years. Back, well, if you will, All-Staters. Mm -hmm. Jacob Volstead, also an All-Stater. <laughs> He's a man. He was my most valuable player in the booth. Um, that last possession for Regina with five minutes to go. Oh boy. Was all Jacob. Well, well, I'm sorry. I know you don't agree. Uh, but I don't know if you had another player you could count on or go to that you knew could grind out four yards when Get you needed that extra. it. You always got extra. Is that true? Yeah, no, he probably ten times. We probably had fourteen snaps in the last yeah. drive and he carried it ten of those times. So well, wasn't McCaffrey dinged a little bit at that point as well? He got no? poked in the eye yeah. early in the game and then got back <clears throat> in and, mm -hmm. and um but, you know, it's one of those deals we kind of, Coach Canales has worked with those offensive linemen. They've worked extremely hard, and Jacob's yeah. worked hard. And, and they all have, but, you know, it was one of those things where I think Coach just said, you know, we're going to let the linemen and Jacob Bullstead carry the load here. And sure. I can't think of his name, but you had a lineman that got holes. Uh, Daniel Gaffey and Ben Keating. Yeah, Keating. Keating. Yeah. Yeah. Keating. Now ben Keating had the drop block. Yeah, blocked that Keating. butt, didn't he? Ben Keating's been a great football player for us, and, I, and I, I, he always is, you know, one, he's a great young man, and works hard, real quiet, um, but, you know, has played great for three years now, but I think he saved his best for last. I mean, mm -hmm. he was huge mm -hmm. uh, in the championship game. Uh, Spirit Lake kind of runs an offense similar to Solon's. Mm -hmm. They run a run trap and, and spread you out, you know, vertically and horizontally, and and, uh, you know, it requires you to do some special things on defense. And Ben Keating was just, I, I tell you, it's, it's as good as I've seen him play. Stopping that mm -hmm. the trap play and, and the off-tackle play, he was phenomenal. And, uh, and then, obviously, the block punt was, was just huge. <laughs> it, I just can't describe how thrilling that play was. Great way to start the second half. And, and then, <laughs> and then <clears throat> your grandson picked up the block punt. Uh, Ran out of grass. <laughs> <laughs> Got it down to the five yard line. I thought he was in. <laughs> Why'd you push him? Did, uh, did Grandpa let him know that? Or uh, ball game? That was that was uh, it was good. I mean, it was. Uh, you know, and that's something we work on every Thursday in our walkthroughs. We work on if the ball's blocked and it's behind line of scrimmage, you scoop and score. If it goes past the line of scrimmage, you leave it alone. Um, and they didn't hesitate. You know, Jake no. picked it up and took off. And, Mm -hmm. And uh, gave us great field position. We were able to punch in this one. How do you work on block punts in practice? Well, you, you have a kicker, and what you do is when we're doing our block punt, we don't want any collisions or get guys right. getting hurt. So, what they do is we have the punter either slap the ball down behind the line of scrimmage, so it simulates a block punt, or he slaps it and then he throws it across the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. So, okay. they have to find it. One, they have to find it after they block, they, they hit their block points. And then two, like I said, if it's behind the line of scrimmage, then they pick it up and score. Otherwise, they okay. But if that goes it. over the line, you can't pick it up and run with it. Uh, you can't. Now it's you're risking the free ball thing, and if you mm -hmm. fumble it back, then they get it. So okay. Then they get a first down, yeah. right? If they recover it. Yeah, so you really want the them team. to fall on it. Yeah. If it's yeah. behind the line of scrimmage, you either get away from it or okay. you just cover it up. Okay. okay. Well, that was also a turning point in the game for Regina and Spirit Lake. Again, Spirit Lake. Toughest team I've seen uh, for an, a Regina opponent all year, but you face some really good ones in the playoffs. You, 
Uh, Dyersville Beckman, mm -hmm. good team that made Very it real great. close yeah. and scary. And Minneapolis was no slouch. No, Minneapolis is going to be a great team for years to come. They've got a good junior class, sophomore class. That quarterback of theirs was a junior. Yep. Uh, is the uh, best quarterback you saw this year, other than Nate Streb, uh, would that be the Minneapolis or the Spirit Lake quarterback? Mark? You know, um, so Ertz, kid, out, Ertz kid out of Minneapolis is a really talented football player, and he had a great supporting cast around him. He, he's probably the best pure thrower. Okay. Uh, Paul Brown from Spirit Lake was a great runner and thrower, mm -hmm. uh, very, very efficient with the offense. Um, West Liberty, you know, they, their quarterback's back too. He was, mm -hmm. he was, a, he was a great player. Um, <laughs> so I really felt like our schedule really was conducive to, to helping us get to a championship because I really mm -hmm. felt like down the stretch we were facing teams that really required us to lock in uh, defensively and offensively on certain particular areas that we needed to shore up as we were going into the, you know, the semis. And, and uh, we were very, very fortunate from that standpoint to, to, to have those good challenges uh, heading into the playoffs. That's a good way to look at it, Marv. He has a future. There's a rumor going around. Uh, I don't know that Bud was talking about it, but you might be playing A instead of double A this year. Well, our, our beds numbers are way down. Um, Technically, we think we're, we're our beds numbers will drop 25. So when that's three three classes, so you're looking at our numbers will be eight you know, eight to nine kids per class smaller than we have been wow. mm. uh, in the past. So um, and and we we want to monitor and see if that's a trend that you know then two years from now will be even smaller again or whatever the situation is. But uh, those numbers will be coming out here at the end of December and we'll kind of figure out where we're at at that mm. point. So. Wow. So you could be going down to one A next year, then, possibly. In possibly, yeah. Hmm. Wow. Now we got to get, we gotta get kids that want Regina. Uh, you know, like I so said, this senior class was huge. We had 26 kids, 25, and then a foreign exchange student, uh, which is that's the biggest we've had. And uh, the, the, the football. Team. Correct. Yeah. And then the exciting thing with that is is. Um, you know, 22 of those 25 were here as first graders. Yeah. Um, and so we think that's pretty special um, yeah. that uh, kids are staying here. Those kids, and, and I think that's a lot of the success we had this year was because of that, because these kids have competed and, and been around each other for the last 12 years, and, and really uh, you create that family atmosphere. And, and, um, and you could really see it on Saturday at the game because. You know, five, six minutes ago, these kids were tired. I mean, our kids were laying on the line, and it was a tough physical game, and they were completely exhausted, you know, almost completely mm -hmm. spent, and they were literally just urging each other on wow. to Is the point right? where the coaches didn't have to yeah. really step in and do much because guys like Nick Girard, Seal, and Ross Westermeyer, and Nate Streb, and, you know, and Zach Brennan, all those guys were just, you know, Communicating Zach Reese and just saying, "Hey, we got to do it." You know, we work too hard, and and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and so it's great. From That's a coaching special. standpoint, you just kind of sit and watch. And, and <laughs> that it gives me goosebumps. Was, was that similar to last year's senior class too, Marv? Or um, yeah, as many seniors. Last year? Uh, we had a lot of seniors that played last year. It wasn't as big. Uh -huh. uh, it was more like 20, 21, 22, um, which was another good class. But yeah. uh, but um, but this one was really really big for us. So. Mm -hmm. Well. And it kind of puts to rest the rumors and the myths that perpetuate about Catholic schools recruiting. I get so sick of hearing that every time. Well, we did it in first grade. Tell them we did it in first grade. We grew it all. Our bear and bunny rooms <laughs> right. are doing a good job. Yeah, the bunny room. <laughs> yeah. Wallert. Uh, I think they were cute. Who? Wallert. Wallert? Mm -hmm. I don't know about them. Uh, I do and, know about them, and it's just And Dolly recruits, I know that. No, it's not. True. The, the whole point is on this while. recruiting. If you want to pay twelve, fifteen thousand dollars to go to school a year, <laughs> it's hard to recruit. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, well, I know <laughs> yeah. the seniors this year were quoted after the championship game saying this was extra special because we're seniors. They've won back-to-back -back titles. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about how those seniors, if not the rest of the. Uh, prepared to defend that state title. It had to be something unique at the beginning of the practice season. Well, I, you know, our, our class last year was uh, was really talented, super talented, very, very high profile guys, um, uh, and rightfully so. You know, we had some extremely, you know, Berkeley Grimm and Jack Reducci, Anthony Halsh, mm -hmm. uh, John Stack, Joe Strang, 
uh, you know, Braden Lehman. I mean, these are Peckoff. great, yeah, you know, Zach Peckoff, yeah. great football players, high profile guys, uh, very small, a lot of different things they were doing. But it kind of, <clears throat> that was the focus. And, and these younger guys, seniors this year, you know, were kind of under the radar. We, you know, three or four of these guys played in the championship game. Uh, it was a very heavily senior dominated yeah. team. But we knew through the course of the season last year that these guys were pretty good. These guys were really good football players uh, and just needed a chance to show it, you know. And, and, and from the first game against BGM and so on, those first couple of games, non district, and they played extremely well and, and played the way we knew they could play. But I guess during the off season, one of the things we had to do was just present to them that, hey, we think you guys can be really good, you know, as good, if not, you know, better in some areas than we were the prior year. So, uh, it was just a matter of them coming out and showcasing what they could do and, and, and playing well on uh, on Friday nights, and they did it. Well, they did, and it was just an epic season again. Uh, we've got a couple of those seniors here to join us today, uh, <laughs> and we really appreciate you guys. Want to introduce yourself? I'm Drew Coffin. So Drew, Drew's our starting cornerback, played a lot last year, came in this year, uh, had a phenomenal year at corner. Coach Dumont felt he might have been one of the best corners in the state, cover corners. Uh, him along with George Seal were on the outside, and we really felt good. like they could knock things down for yeah. us. But uh, Drew fought through some injuries, didn't practice the, the, the last week before the championship game, uh, had a foot issue that was really, really tender. Didn't know that. Uh, was having trouble walking around, and just, you know, one of those courageous efforts when guys step up and play through some pain and some injury and, and, uh, and stepped up and helped lead his team to a state championship. Well, Drew, thanks for being here. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. On back to back yeah, state yeah. titles. That's really something just special that you'll never forget. And I'm sure you've heard that a million times now. Yeah. yeah. 28 no, that's uh, a nice ring, huh? Uh huh. And yeah. 20 years from now, it's going to feel just as good yep. uh, and special. We're going to look back on this season and last and, and still be talking about it then. Yes, sir? Uh, I'm Ross Westmeyer. I'm a senior and I've played linebacker. Very good. Welcome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having us. And Ross last year played a little bit outside linebacker for us, filled in kind of a rover uh, safety outside linebacker. This year we moved him inside for the most part and and uh, just flourished. Uh, for me it was it was like the light went off and watching him run plays down from the inside out was phenomenal and he was a great compliment to Jacob Volstead inside and uh, and then also was one of our uh, running backs as a three person running back system between Jacob Volstead, Joe McCaffrey and then Ross Westermeyer. So, uh, but uh, two guys that were instrumental in helping <clears throat> Regina win two back-to-back -back state, champ back yeah. -back state championships. So, Ross, what was it like this year? What was the feeling like at the end of the game as the, let's say, after uh, Jacob got that final first down that you needed? It was, uh, I can't even really explain. Well, I was pretty tired, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just like Coach was saying before you arrived. But it's just, I was so happy to go out. Um, end my high school football career with my teammates on top, and it was just a feeling I can't describe, but I was so happy. Uh, Drew, Spirit Lake, I think, was the toughest team you guys played all year. How do you compare them to Dyersville Beckman or Mediapolis or Solon? Yeah, good question. Uh, yeah, um, coming into the game, we knew they were going to be pretty good, and we knew that they had a lot of good skilled players and some big linemen. So compared to other schools, they were definitely with the top band that we played this year we knew that they were going to be good like that we played Mediapolis and Dyersville Beckman they were also very good teams but uh we knew that they were probably going to be one of the toughest games of the year so we came in with that tough mindset were they good sports afterwards or during the game uh, oh yeah they were all good kids um a couple of us knew a couple of guys from there from other things so oh, yeah. they were nice mm -hmm. it sure seemed good from spectators yeah. viewpoint I know I met some Spirit Lake fans after the game, and they were all good sports and congratulated us. And I told your coach earlier, I said, I told the Spirit Lake fans they were the best team I've seen uh, play Regina this year by far. Yeah. I thought. Oh, it took me three quarters. I kept thinking they were booing us <laughs> every time. <laughs> yeah, 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 I did. One too. kid was getting. I thought that we do face masks. Did we personal? You know, oh, we lay hit a kid, but his name was Lou. Yes. Oh, yes. Right? yes. Oh, okay. It took me three and a half quarters. <laughs> 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 Right away, I started looking too, on the roster that. to see who were they. <laughs> no, it was their guy they were cheering for. But I don't know what the record is. But uh, I've been up that dome a lot of times, and between Regina and Spirit Lake, I'd almost say that was a record crowd. 
Is that right? Oh, it was. I, just, I feel that way. There were so probably many knows people better. from Spirit Lake. I know. Yeah. I mean, looked to be. I don't know from your vantage point on the field, but it looked to me like there were more Spirit Lake fans than Regina. Was that their first time in a championship yes. game? Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. This is the first year that Spirit Lake had ever won a playoff game. That right? I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. That's why they were so enthused. I'm sure. Well, and I. Yeah. I just thought they were well, it makes special. the game good when there's field on both yeah. sides yeah. there. Now, yeah. You know, the, the, the unique thing about the state playoffs, with the exception of the 4A game, is you, you buy a ticket, you get it all for, for all day. So yeah. you really can't do attendance yeah. Yeah. for game for games. Right. I actually okay. felt the same way you felt. I thought that might have been one of the, the uh, largest yeah. crowds for a championship game. Right. I, I think it was. <laughs> Speaking of records, Marv, uh, is this your fifth year that you have? That's correct, yeah. That's pretty good. Two state championships in a row and, and a defeat in the final the first year, right? Yeah, that's right. And Thanks for bringing that up. Told me, <laughs> somebody well, you're supposed to say a second place trophy. That, that your record is like six Where's the and trophy? five in five years. Where's the trophy, it, Mark? It's, it's not my record. It's, uh, it's I, a, I haven't won any of those games. So well, you're, not, you, you're yeah. responsible for yeah. that, and I think people think you've done a wonderful job. I'd like to ask you. How you can clean up those five losses? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Where's the trophy? You couldn't get in the school. Like they, you know, like well, these, these kids. You, obviously, you can tell they don't have their dress code on. Today. I see. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I but, understand. <laughs> but uh, we, yeah, it was in the school. So okay. Um, before you guys arrived, we were just going down the list of all state teammates that you have. Yeah. Uh, pretty impressive. Seven of them. Uh, Zach Brennan, second team uh, on the offensive line. Uh, George Seal made second team on the as a defensive back. Pretty impressive. Um, Nick Gerard, third team on the offensive line. And then finally Joe McCaffrey was a third team pick at running back. Um, that's, I mean, I don't know how many you had last year, but seven is really impressive, guys. And, I'll, you know, I'll be honest, we've talked about it as a staff numerous times. I mean, you have two guys right yep. here that, uh, you know, I would be hard pressed to find anybody that played their position better than they played. It's just yeah. one of those unfortunate situations where they're not going to let 11. That's right. Players on the same team. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I agree with you. And uh, like I said, I know Coach Dumont has talked, uh, knew about uh, how comfortable he is with Drew Coffin back there. And, uh, you know, truly felt like he was one of the best corners in the state. And, and the thing I love, uh, you know, about Regina and the platforms we have is, is, you know, obviously these guys are great football players, but they're also great students and then great athletes in other sports as well. They're very, very diverse in what they're doing. And, uh, I know Ross is getting taking a week off, and then you get ready for, for basketball. And yeah. Drew's got a bright future in baseball or All football, right. whatever he chooses to do. So, uh, All right. Cool. And basketball, you played on, huh? yeah. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I ran into your basketball coach uh, a week ago at the Iowa women's basketball game. I said, "Have you started practice yet, Randy?" He said, "Well, kind of. We've only got two players, <laughs> <laughs> thanks to the football success. Yeah. So hopefully, there'll be a lot of football players that go out for basketball. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, it, you get a week off even. Mm -hmm. Wow, let the body heal. And yeah, that's a week much needed. But yeah, a lot of uh, majority <laughs> of the basketball core, football players, and the core of the basketball players are baseball players. And sure, yeah, we got a lot of. They need you back." After I seen what happened last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I heard. Dan, 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 Dan. Oh, yeah. Did they have a game last night? Well, it's Jamboree. Oh, Jamboree. Oh. Well, well how do you think you'll be, Ross, in basketball this year when you get I, everybody together? I think when we get everyone together and get into basketball shape, and I think we have a chance of doing pretty well, maybe make a run in the postseason. Good. Well, we'd really like to see that, and we wish you the best of luck. I wanted to ask you a question. You talked about getting in basketball shape. You guys just played a game on the field at the Uni Dome, and that surface looked pretty hard. Was there a difference? Did you feel, did your body feel the difference in playing at the Uni Dome as opposed to elsewhere? Uh, yeah, it is different. Your guys are always a lot faster, it seems like, on turf, uh -huh. and the ground is harder. Like, when you slide on it, you get cut up. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. pretty tough on your skin so yeah it is a lot different playing on normal grass so it's, it's pretty fun I'll, it's nice playing on turf like that though did you feel faster Ross uh, yeah yeah it, it's I think the biggest thing is a uh, transitioning the weather from practicing 30 degree weather and then going into the dome about 70 yeah. degrees and that's kind of a transition that uh, teams make but when the games really even realize most of it. 
I bet. Was your, was your body more sore after this game? Did you notice that? I mean, yeah. it could be the turf, but it also could be the opponent. Yeah, and we played all four quarters for that game, so which was a little different. More time on the field, Andrew. Yeah, it was a little yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, guys, I'm going to switch gears just a bit. I don't know if you knew this, but your coach used to play for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Did you hear that rumor? <laughs> yeah. I think I heard something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know this, but he had a big play one time against well, Ohio State, who happened to have a defensive back, who's now the Nebraska head coach, Bo Pelini. The big play, I think he ran him over to score a touchdown. At least that's the way uh, the Hawkeye fans look at it. Uh, so, Marv, I wanted to ask, when you played for the Hawkeyes, did you ever play Nebraska? No. You did not? No. Nope. Uh, we, uh, when we were here, we our, our, pre, our Prince Pre Big Tens were, uh, we played Drake, uh, oh, I played a few other game. teams, Penn State, but. Uh, that was zero zero uh, at the half, wasn't it? Uh, I can't remember, but uh, but yeah, no, we never played in the I was so. I was yeah. there, and yeah. it was zero zero at the half, and it ended up I think fifty six to nothing or something. That's probably right. I think that's exactly how it ended. <laughs> oh, I sorry. just remember the final. So, <laughs> so uh, what years did you play, Mar? Was that 87, 88? 84 to eighty eight? Eighty four to eighty eight. Eighty four to eighty eight. Okay. And played for Hayden Fry, mm -hmm. legendary coach. Um, your coach had a big play. In Columbus, last second play, last play of the game for the Hawkeyes, fourth and 16, I believe. I was there. Big touchdown catch. It uh, changed a lot of things. Changed the <laughs> career of the Ohio State coach yes. uh, uh, yes. right after that game he was fired. Yeah. <laughs> um, it changed the direction, too. It helped direction of the Hawkeye football program, uh, I think. Uh, it was a very big signature win. And now, well, and that was about the first time we beat Ohio State over there since God was a baby. I, I think they said uh, <laughs> thirty years. It yeah, it was, it was a big deal. Yeah. God was a baby <laughs> since God was a baby. Since Shep was a baby. <laughs> Sorry, Lord, forgive me. Uh, uh, so here we flash forward two thousand eleven, and we've got another signature moment. Uh, the first time that Iowa and Nebraska have hooked up in. And um, Marv, I just thought we'd ask you to talk a little bit about what to expect from the. Hawkeyes and the Cornhuskers and, <coughs> and the Spotlight. I mean, this is the only game on Friday at 11 o'clock. It's on ABC, by the way, KCRG TV. What do you think? Well, well that's what I love about it. First of all, is, is, it, is, a, is a player you want to play in these type of settings. I think our student athletes at Regina love that type of uh, platform, whether you're playing a Solon or, you know, a top <coughs> tier team or program. You want, you would rather play in those games than play in a game that doesn't have that meaning and significance. Mm -hmm. and, and in the Big Ten, the, the, the issue has always been, like in the past, when Ohio State would be playing for a national championship, we were done right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and all these other teams were playing in, in post-Thanksgiving and then playing in their championship games, and then now they're getting ready for a national championship game. They haven't played for 65 days or something. So I love it. I think it's a great platform. As a student athlete, you want to play in these settings. You want to be playing on national TV, and you want to be programs and figuring out exactly where you stand versus them. So. I think it's awesome for Iowa. I think it's awesome for the Big Ten, and and uh, you know I think it's going to be a great setting. And one thing I can promise you, it's going to be a really close game. It seems like that's what Iowa does. Yeah, it is. They yeah, play a lot of close right. games, uh, and it just comes down to making plays at the end uh, to help your team win. So uh, I love the setting. I hope they continue to do it. And 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 to be honest with you, just to get on another subject, I wish the Big Ten would add probably three or four more teams. I think six on a in a division is not enough. About eight teams in each division and then when you get through that division you truly know you're a pretty mm -hmm. darn good football mm -hmm. team. I wish they would have added Missouri. I wish Notre Dame would have come on board and filled out the yeah. East End. Uh, but now is this game I still think that's not all shaken out yet. I still think there might be some more movement. Really? Uh, I think you're right. Time to, in the next year or two. But I can uh, tell you a lot of Missouri fans are unhappy. They don't want to go to the SEC yeah. for a number of reasons. We're a better fit for them than SEC. Uh, that's for sure. Big Ten. Uh -huh. This game going to be Friday. Yes, yes. all the every time. time at every time, every year. Right. Well, There's they've the only signed a two-year contract, but but that's the intent. Well, they can't play night games in the Big Ten in the month of November because oh, really? of the weather. Yeah, that's a. It's been that way for a number of years. But that's Friday. But that that's change. that's, that's a fantastic time to have the platform. Well, I don't think they're going to put these kids outdoors in this 
Yeah. Well, you know, good. in this climate. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's kind of early, but not for those of us just rolling out after a full day of filling the belly with turkey and dressing. And <laughs> so there are more turkeys in Nebraska. Mar Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think has the best quarterback? Uh, who has a better the strength coach? Or, uh, I mean, what I mean is compared to each other, who, who is the... Regina has the best strength coach. No, coach. I don't mean. I mean, <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, that's that's right. Right. Uh, well, he's, he's a tie for coach, yeah. but yeah. who's who's the better? Uh, you know, big Ten quarterback uh, between Nebraska and Iowa. That's a great question. Uh, I, I think Vandenberg's one of the best quarterbacks I've seen in a long time in Iowa. Mm -hmm. I think he, he has all the skills. He's got the arm strength, the leadership characteristics. He also has the ability to throw the touch on the football that's needed he at has times. Great. That's what he's really good at. Yeah. He, he, he hit, uh, hit uh, what's the guy's name? McNutt, yeah. He hit perfect on that one touchdown. Yeah. He has to Purdue. The one thing he's not is a threat running the football. No, yeah. He, mm -hmm. But he's effective when he does scramble, gets out of the pocket. He's able to pick up five, six yards. A lot of times it's first down. But Martinez, on the other hand, is perfect for what Nebraska wants to do. They want to play action. They want to run the option. They want to. Mm -hmm. You know, give the ball to Burkhead and have that threat, and then also, then, like I said, throw the option in there with the play action. He does a really, really good job of managing that uh, that offense for them. So I think they're both fits for their programs. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it's going to come down to who controls the line of scrimmage. I mean, who can run the football mm -hmm. most effectively is going to win this game because chances are the weather's going to be pretty good. chilly and windy, mm -hmm. and, and uh, the toughest, most physical team is probably going to be the team that wins it. Vandenberg's pretty impressive as well. I heard him on a post-game interview. We've all heard him interviewed before. He does a very good job. Yeah. He sounds like a leader. He does sound like a leader. Yeah. And, uh, now, before the Michigan game, Iowa prepped for the Wolverines by planning to force Denard Robinson to beat them through the air, to beat them with passing, which is not his best trait. Mm -hmm. And it worked. And I see Martinez for their, the Cornhuskers an awful lot like Robinson for the Wolverines. Yeah. And I wonder if, if you think maybe I was going to try to force him to beat them through the air. Well, I think uh, that's exactly what I would try to do. You try to, you try to make them beat you with something they're not proficient mm -hmm. at. The other thing is, is I know Iowa wants to mention they want to make them not be able to run the football and throw the ball. The great thing is... I think we are very effective against the option. I mean, if you mm -hmm. watch with Georgia Tech, I remember when we played oh. Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. I mean, we shut oh, that off. Yeah. Right. I think we'll have a good plan coming into this. It's, the only problem is it's a short turnaround. You only get six days yeah. to get turned around. But, uh, uh, but ultimately, I think we'll have a good plan against the option and then force Martinez to, to hopefully throw the ball on third and medium, third and long. And if, if we get that going, I think we gotta, we're in a pretty good position. I heard a statistic, too, on a <clears throat> TV, I don't know how accurate it is, Mark, but I believe in the last three games, or let's say since Minnesota, we blitzed 21% of the time, hmm. as opposed to prior to that, maybe 4%. Do you, uh, That's good. In the, does that surprise you, uh, Mark? Uh, with uh, I think um, the change in defensive strategy a little bit. A little bit. I mean, <clears throat> the thing is, when you bring pressure, you want to get there. I mean, that's the key, oh, I yeah. think, is. And then the other thing that pressure can do is just create a sense of doubt in the quarterback's mind. He doesn't always know where the blitz is coming. Mm -hmm. If he has to check for a weak side yeah. corner periodically, yeah. that kind of throws things off in his mind as far as clean decision making. But um, the Purdue game, uh, that was wonderful. That cornerback. Mark didn't get to watch that game. I know. Mm -hmm. I saw the highlights. You said, he but, blasted uh, him. <laughs> yeah, but that's, I mean, that's the key is, is uh, you know, Minnesota did it to us. If you remember, Vandenberg got hit in the back and mm -hmm. fumbled. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, those types of things, if you can just bring a couple of those period and they don't know when it's coming, and now they got to sit there and schedule it and look for it, and and uh, that kind of gets them out of the rhythm of their offense. Can we make – what's a prediction? What do you think? I, you know, I. here's the deal. This is a huge game as far as where I was going to go yeah. in mm -hmm. the bowl game. So 7-5 uh, and five versus 8-4 and four is, is a big, big difference. Uh, and, and not that that matters, but I, I, I just know – that these kids seem to, to rally for the big game with the exception of the Michigan State game, although they came back in the second half. Yeah. But, you know, I think this is going to be a plot love and relish. And, and uh, you know, Nebraska's coming off uh, getting dismantled last week by Michigan, and I think it's going to be more of the same, to be honest with you, because I think Iowa's running game is going to be effective. And, and then uh, I just keep liking Vandenberg the more I see him. Yeah. You know, you think they'll have a letdown since they didn't make them. 
not Iowa, but Nebraska, since they didn't make the championship. Yeah. I, I think this Nebraska, is what they've been looking for. This is, has to be the biggest disappointment for Nebraska. Right. I think they really yeah, thought they'd come to the Big Ten and, yes. and, and make a big And I think it hasn't gone the way they thought it would have. No. Well, their coach right. has been there. This is fourth season. In the previous three seasons, in their division of the Big 12, they have either tied for the championship or won it outright. Yeah. So in his, his fourth year, they expected to do the same thing here, yeah. be playing in that championship. Now, did Iowa State upset them last year in Nebraska at Nebraska? I believe, I believe they beat Nebraska and Texas, didn't they, last year? I think I Nebraska think they beat. Well, I just heard something this morning. Or maybe they beat Nebraska. I don't know. I can't remember it. It's but they Iowa have State. beaten them, yeah, in the last What'd you hear? Two I heard that Ohio State may not accept a bowl invitation. Well, that could happen to Penn State as well. As a sacrifice or whatever you want to call it yeah. uh, to the NCAA who's going to come down on them for all the infractions if they if they sacrifice this bowl game which in their viewpoint is meaningless you know they, they may end up six and six this year yeah. um, and I that think they will that coupled with Penn State dropping in the bowl pecking order um, if Iowa goes to Nebraska and wins, I think it really moves the Hawkeyes up the, yeah. the, the bowl pecking order, or picking order, uh, whichever you prefer. Uh, I, we'll just see. But, you know, Ohio State's still facing some pretty significant um, um, sanctions. Uh, a lot of, you know, there were some more uh, violations that came out in the period when Penn State was making all the news, and it just went right under the radar because of Penn State's... Is the Michigan of, game at Michigan, Ohio State? I, I'd take Michigan. I think it's at Michigan. I, I bet Michigan, Michigan yeah. will yeah. beat Ohio State, yeah. and that leaves them 6-6. Six and six. And yeah. Michigan State goes to Northwestern. Northwestern, and that could, they could get beat there, but in their case, they're still in the championship. Yeah, game. no matter yeah. what, <clears throat> but still. Yeah. But, okay. If Wisconsin beats Penn State, <laughs> you got Wisconsin and Michigan State in the championship game. Does Penn State accept a bowl game? Yes. They will? Kids okay. didn't do anything wrong. No, they didn't. I agree with that. But but the bowls will pass them over because of the notoriety. They'll drop down. <laughs> well, I'm let's go back to the money. Penn State yeah. travels pretty good, and they want to throw a bowl. Maybe not this year. I think you throw all that out the window this yeah. year. Well, I don't but, know. Uh, we'll have to see. I don't yeah. think no. It's all will. speculation. It depends. If they go to the Big Ten title game and win, well, fans are going to be happy. Well, and they, they, have to, they, they get the BCS bid then. And yeah. then, yeah, yeah. right. Be, yeah. Uh, that's it won't right. matter. Right. Yeah. It won't matter. But, I mean, even if they get beat. And, and how about uh, the Zucker? Ooh. He's, he's a dead man walking. They're going Winner or lose, yeah, I think yeah. he'll be gone. He'll be gone. Who do they play, Indiana? At Minnesota. Oh, at Minnesota. <laughs> well, I wouldn't count Minnesota. No, well, no, we know no. that, don't we? No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they, <laughs> well, ever since that Iowa game, they've given everyone a tough time, win or lose. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I expect Illinois to have their hands full on senior day up at uh, Minnesota. Hey, I want to change the subject here a minute. I'd like to ask Drew and Ross, uh, you're both seniors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are your plans for uh, next year? Do you know? Do you plan on continuing uh, your sport or concentrate on academics, or is it still up in the air? Did you, did you, did you pass? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I <laughs> uh, plan on probably going to a four-year college, and I'll play either football or baseball. I haven't really decided yet. I'm just going to let let a couple months go off and sure. try to choose. So, yeah, that's what I'm He's a good baseball player. Good. <laughs> Do you have any uh, aspirations as to where, maybe, Drew? I don't really. No, no? No. Okay. Yeah, keep my search open right now. Sure. So, Ross, what about you? Uh, it's still kind of up in the air. I haven't really decided yet, but I'd love to play some college football for D2, D3 mm -hmm. program. Uh, I think I'd have fun with it. But I'm just <laughs> interested in um, finding a college uh, good with um, I'm interested in speech and hearing uh, disorders, like um, like a speech therapist, and mm -hmm. so that's kind of my field of interest. And Good. So, yeah. And if sports doesn't work out, that's okay. And Iowa has a great room. They so do. Mm -hmm. Do you play uh, soccer? I might this year. Okay. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Senior year, I might. Uh, Are they going for number three title? 
four. 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 Yeah. Four. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No pressure there, right, guys? Yeah. You, know, you play soccer and Drew plays baseball, right? Yeah. Okay. Drew, what's your position in baseball? Uh, third base. Third base, the yeah. hot corner. The hot corner. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have some reflexes to play third. Oh, yeah. There's some hard hit balls, but it's, uh, it's nice being in that corner. I've gotten used to that spot, so it's nice being there. Talk about your baseball coach a little bit. Andy Gant, oh, he's a great guy. Um, he really works with us in the off season to uh, like with stuff we need, and he's always there whenever we need him. So he's a really good coach, role model, and he's also a good friend too. And he looks after the little kids too, doesn't he? Oh uh, yeah, he mm -hmm. nurtures that program. <laughs> yeah, he's so good. I was smart. I brought him into the football program as well. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw him out there. <laughs> There's another thing about Drew that no one's brought up. His dad coaches what? Uh, that's right. South yeah. yeah. one of them. Really? Yeah. 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 You know, that's something I wanted to ask Marv about earlier. Uh, my son Paul is a fifth grader at Regina, and he played for George Seal Senior. Yeah. And Chris Suckamel was the other fifth grade or fifth and sixth grade coach. Both of those teams not only finished undefeated, but pretty much dominated every game they played. It's something special to watch them play and execute. That's what those coaches taught. Now, these are volunteer coaches. They don't get paid anything. Mm -hmm. And the commitment the coaches made, I'm sure, was the same kind of commitment you got when you started in what, third grade? Fifth, fifth, fifth grade. Yeah. Fifth. Okay. You know, it was, for my son, uh, it was an eye-opener. Uh, I can still remember he came up from his first full pad practice and said, Dad, you know, so-and-so hit me in the mouth. <laughs> Did you hit him back? <laughs> he said, oh, no. Mm. I said, well, th this is your opportunity. Uh, you know, it's flag football is a, uh, a big difference from full pad Regina yeah. football. And, but I was really impressed watching these kids execute every week and just can't believe the commitment that guys like George Seal and Chris Suckamel and uh, boy I had another name, Tony Quinlan. Yep, that guy smaller programs, our third and fourth grade programs as well. So I can't believe what he does. Yeah. It's I'm, I'm sure there is somebody like a Tony Quinlan yeah. for the City High program at that age and the West High program because those are good programs too but you what want to is talk it? about those guys yeah. on the way up the ladder there, uh, Mark? Well, I, I think we're blessed. I mean, two years ago, uh, this is our second year of starting third and fourth grade football and pads. Uh, I've really, you know, I'm trying to do a lot of studies on it because flag football, third and fourth, can almost be more dangerous than padded mm -hmm. football mm -hmm. just because, you know, mm -hmm. kids are running full speed and yep. kids are trying mm -hmm. to go and grab a flag. Mm -hmm. And so we're really trying to weigh the pros and cons, but I don't know if third and fourth graders are technically ready, you know, mentally for the the contact part of it yet. Yeah. So we're just yeah. really weighing those options. Tony's doing a good job with the programs. Mm -hmm. And we do got great coaches, whether it's at our youth programs or junior high or high school. Mm -hmm. We're very, very fortunate. And like I said, I, I think the thing that I love most about the atmosphere of Regina is obviously these guys are great athletes, but you know, I guess I just wanted them to what other programs do you guys participate in at Regina that are not athletic? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's lots of programs like we're retreat team leaders where we go out and we go to like a church and there's kids from the elementary school that come in and we talk to them. And there's also like 611 where it's 11th graders and 6th graders and you get them, the 6th graders ready to come into 7th grade. So there's a lot of programs like that, Regina, that get, like use the older kids to, ment to help the youths to get into the high school. You're in one of my grandsons, didn't you? Joel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Joel. Mm -hmm. and Jacob Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it may not seem like much right now, Drew, but that's a heck of a commitment, and it teaches you an awful lot about giving back to the community. And I'm sure you've had mentors like Coach Cook and all the other coaches down the line, as well as teachers who've taught you. It's mm -hmm. important to be involved and to teach, the, in this case, the younger kids what it takes to be successful, not just in the athletic field, but in school. Well, it's a big deal for those younger kids, Dan. Oh, those that's older what kids yeah. pay attention to them, let alone mentor them. And well, that's one of you know one of the unique things we got is <clears throat> is a K through 12 school actually yes. even pre K but yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you know a lot of those kids are walking through the hallways with the, with the high school kids at times going to art and different classes so there's a great uh, you know sense of community uh, in the hallways at Regina that uh, uh, that these programs that Drew was talking about are, are I think are that 
these younger kids have someone that they can go to and tug on their shirt and they're a little scared mm -hmm. or a little concerned about something, they can go to somebody and ask them questions. And well, that almost didn't happen, Marv, uh, when uh, I was on the school board in the mid-80s and we were discussing a new elementary school. And if you remember the old elementary school, it was the Iowa City Catholic grade school on mm -hmm. Court Street. And one of the concerns was, do you build the new elementary school out on the Regina campus? We had all kinds of land out there. Or do you keep it because there was an element of parents that were concerned about the K through 12 combination? Guess what? Hmm. Somewhere along the line, a lot of people made the right decision. That was one of the smartest decisions we ever made to make that one K through 12 continuous campus. And just your comments kind of. I would agree with you 100%. Yeah, on and, and, you know, but it was a question mark at the time. Makes that for a little bit of, makes for a little bit of a traffic uh, issue early in the morning and the afternoon, yes, but it's definitely it's, well worth it. It's that way at every don't care where you go. Absolutely. Uh, I grew up in a sim an identical school system, K through twelve Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And I still remember football Fridays and being in fifth grade or fourth grade and yeah. seeing my idols wearing their jerseys to school that day. Everybody went to the game. Just like I think they do now for you guys. You and wear I can jerseys. Tell you, you wear jerseys. <laughs> once a wow. month they get to. Once a month. Yeah. Okay. We've got a dress code now, so okay. it's I, I do, so. What, but, what's yeah. the dress code? Uh, collared shirt. There's actually a, there's three different forms of shirts that we have that are uniform. They all look alike, uh, for the most part. Is that right? There's like Joe, white and blue, and mm -hmm. best thing they ever did out there. Mm -hmm. How did the students like the? Uh, Let's go. That's the next question. <laughs> some do, some don't, right? Yeah, it's all right. You don't have to. You can get up ten minutes before you got to go and just exactly. throw some yeah. off. Just, yeah. just grab that from underneath the bed. Yeah, yeah. you're not competing yeah. for you know, the yeah. coolest shirt or no. whatever. Yeah. Why? I, uh, I can't understand that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> makes more difference. I to think a they should have had to wear. Guy, uh, hey, when I was in school, we had to wear yeah. a blazer and tie. Yeah. The whole nine yards. You're kidding me. Oh, no. Oh, wow. I had to have the insignia on the blazer. Holy uh, smoke. Yeah, it was a different world then. That's great. Um, we've got about five minutes left, guys, and there's a question I just have to ask Mark. <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever met your coach's mom, but she's probably Regina's biggest fan. And I just wanted to ask if you'd talk a little bit about your mom and also wanted to get nosy and say, is mom cooking Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow? She's coming over for some pie yeah. and coffee. So uh, <laughs> yeah. she's, got, she's got my two other brothers. Yeah. She's going to a couple different parties. That's tough. So. <laughs> but, uh, but she's doing well. I mean, she had a scare five years ago with uh, pancreatic cancer, and uh, mm -hmm. we are fortunate enough to have a Dr. James Howe at the university, who's also a Regina parent, uh, had surgery on her, and it's, uh, it's being managed now. And so it's been five years now, so she's she's doing well. And, uh, and you're right, she loves coming down there and parking and watching the games. And, yeah. and um, uh, uh, obviously, uh, been a huge, you know, resource for me and, and mm -hmm. uh, a, a benefactor for me and helping me to work forward to accomplishing my dreams. So a lot of the lessons she's taught me, I try to make sure we have those platforms in place for other kids to come through that they can try to accomplish their dreams and goals as well. So very well put. She's a special lady. Get you a quick little story. Your coach coached my then fourth grade son Paul in basketball last winter, and. We'd play in North Liberty, and I'd sit up in those little stands at the rec center, usually in North Liberty. And I like to sit at the, in the top row of the bleachers so I could put my back up against the wall. I started noticing this older woman at every game, and she's got a little notepad, and she's scribbling <laughs> stuff down. And then one day, she just introduced herself to me and said, I'm Marv's mom. I said, oh, it's really nice to introduce myself. I said, what are you, what are you doing there? Well, she was keeping score of every, not just the game, but each player on okay. on your coach's team and uh, you know they don't keep score at that level yeah so it's just the experience but I, I could just see enough competitive spirit in her <laughs> that by golly she's gonna keep track of it no matter what well I told her to do that because I think it keeps her a little bit more calm and <laughs> doesn't yell as much well I really enjoyed <laughs> sitting with her out there and uh, she's a special lady guys what are you doing for Thanksgiving um, going <clears throat> Our family always has like a big get together in Des Moines. Des Moines, right. yeah. So we always go there and we always have a little backyard football game. Which oh is yeah. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> and it's supposed to be kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. On Thursday. Very nice. Yeah. Ross, what about you? I was just hanging out with some family that were coming down from um, Ames, where my mom grew up in, watching some football. Yeah. Yeah, I got some 
big part of my family is Iowa State fans, so. That's a shame. Oh, yeah. boy. That's going to ruin your Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've got bragging rights. Yeah, they've got <laughs> bragging rights. They're staying until the Iowa State <laughs> game and got to watch it with them. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, boy. So, Ross, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Well, oh, I've, um, I'm thankful for a lot of things. Uh, um, great family, um, the school, coaches, just, I don't know, it's an unlimited list I guess. That's great. The state was pretty special too. Not a lot of people can do that, especially back to back. I feel really thankful I have the coaches and teammates I have. Been a, a special experience. Mm -hmm. Drew, special. what are you thankful for? Oh, uh, yeah, Everything he said, uh, thankful for all the great friends that we have at Regina. It's a really close-knit group. We've all been together, some of us since preschool. Is that so, right? Well, yeah, sure. yeah, long time. So that's nice. And then the family and every, everything that Everything that's a part of Regina is really special for every that is that goes there. So I'm just thankful for everything with Regina and family. Very good. Very nice. Well, I think uh, you ended the season on a high note. Now it's time for basketball, maybe basketball. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. Yeah. Now your coach gets a little rest. You can yeah maybe relax a little at night. And see, that's another thing, Marv. Tell him about the medical care of these kids get out there. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, we uh, got a new partnership with the UI Sports Medicine. Oh. Uh, a great relationship with us. Yes. Uh, trainers are great. Uh, Johnny James is phenomenal. Matt Doyle. Joe. Uh, so been very, very blessed to have that relationship. That's great. Didn't know that. Bob, what are you thankful for? Well, you know, the boys kind of summed it up. I think it all starts with family and friends. And when you get to the age of these older guys, your health. That's so, right. So far, so good, but uh, uh, I feel very fortunate. Bud, we got one minute. What are you thankful for? Kids for the last 12 years. Makes a difference in it our does. lives. It does. I started watching them at, out at North Liberty, and, and, and you meet these parents. So you meet your friends by this exactly. all going on. It's a big family. That's right. It's yeah. one big family. Marvin mm -hmm. made it that way the other night at the homecoming thing. Earl, what are you thankful for? Well, I'm thankful to, to be alive. Uh, I'm 88 years old. I, uh, I have a few more years. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and to be, Marv might be my friend. Yeah. <laughs> We're good friends. I was just thinking the same thing, Marv. I appreciate that. <laughs> Marv, I'm thankful for... These are all the pearl to us, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Marv, I'm thankful to have you on the show again this year. Let's make this a regular Wednesday before Thanksgiving tradition where we have the state title coach on. There you go. Right. Guys, we're thankful for having you here today. Wait, what's yours? Me? I'm thankful that I made it through another year and now we got the holidays ahead. Um, I'm just, yeah, thankful for family and friends and looking forward to seeing my mom this Thanksgiving, Mr.'s and nephews and can't wait. And a little football outside. And I was, going, I was going to beat Nebraska. Jacksonville? Uh -huh. Yep, heading to Jacksonville. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, guys, thanks very much. Really enjoyed watching you perform this season. Mm -hmm. We'll look forward to seeing the basketball team perform. And uh, we want to thank you for watching every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on Channel 18. We've been visiting with Marv Cook, the head coach at the two-time defending state champion, Iowa City Regina Regals. On behalf of and Bud and Earl, I'm Dirk Keller, reminding you that either you're a hawk or a regal or you're not. <laughs> go Hawks, go Regals. Thanks for watching.